Hello, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming, and in this video I'll be showcasing my Eldar Warp Spiders for Warhammer 40,000 by Ghost Miniatures. Hello, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming, and this is part 11 of my Building a Craft World series. So, those of you that have been watching this series, uh, the last part I said it would be a good few months before you saw any more um, Eldar painted up on the channel. Um, and then I remembered that I actually had these um, stored away in a cupboard somewhere, and uh, I was on a bit of a high for painting... Um, Eldar, so uh, I decided to uh, to give these a go. Um, so these models, as you can probably tell, these aren't the Games Workshop ones. The uh, the Games Workshop Warp Spider sculpts are um, very old. I think they were 1998 was the last time they uh, <laughs> last time that they uh, did the uh, the sculpt for Warp Spiders. So um, they don't look very good basically. Um, I had them when I was a kid and uh, when I started getting back into um, the hobby uh, I did actually start picking up some Eldar models again and uh, I, I sort of like the Warp Spider aesthetic and uh, so I did sort of buy them uh, but then when I started doing this force more recently um, I just didn't want to use those in uh, in this force. They didn't really look like they fit in with the newer Eldar models, the flyers and all the new sort of the jet bikes that I've got and everything like that. So um, I thought I'd, I'd pick pick these up. Um, obviously, if you've been keeping track of this series, uh, you'll know that uh, I've also bought the uh, Shining Spears from Ghost Miniatures, and uh, at that same time, I, I, I bought these. I was just so impressed with the the design. Um, they look sometimes with with these third party companies, um, the miniatures look great, but they don't actually tie in with the aesthetic that Games Workshop goes for. So you can tell that it's a third party miniature. Whereas what I found with um, the Ghost miniatures is um, he uses a lot of the uh, the sort of the themes that Games Workshop go for um, in their design themes. So they. they just tie in perfectly they look like they would be games workshop um designed miniatures um so i'll pick pick these up anyway and uh you know i'll uh, i'll start bringing a few up to the camera i've gone with my uh, my normal sort of design and uh, sorry my normal paint scheme um so these are for my craft world ibrisil um which is obviously the the very vibrant blue that you've seen um, so I wanted to sort of keep that tied in uh, to to the uh, the aspect warriors as well. So the actual splinter, I think it's a splinter rifle, is what it's called. I've I've used the same color color scheme as I use on uh, all my um, other Ibrisil miniatures. So that's the Rakar flesh and pallid witch witch flesh highlight. Um, and then I've gone for some of these blue tones. So you can see it just here and some other other details. Uh, here you can see it a little bit better around the side and uh, and on the back there and um, by happy coincidence by painting them this colour you can see it from behind but it really reminds me of um, a particular superhero uh, that has a connection to spiders so uh, that actually works out quite nicely in the end so still tie them in uh, to the Ibrisil Force and still remaining with the um, the warp spider color scheme, but as you can see, this the detail of the sculpts on these is incredible. Um, the actual resin as well that he uses is fantastic. Oh, throw that guy uh, is fantastic. It's you know on a par with Forge World. Um, so yeah, if you do decide to to buy these yourself. I would recommend them. They're uh, as good as the quality that you're, you're used to getting. Obviously, resin does take a little bit more cleanup sometimes, um, but these weren't 
any worse or any better than uh, than Forge World. Um, the these are quite modular as well, so each one of these um, comes with the the legs are actually in two pieces, so you can have. Uh, let me just see if I can find. Uh, so you have this. Uh, if I picked up two exactly the same there, I think I have. Yep. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, these are different. So the the left leg um, is the same on these, um, but the um, sorry the right leg is the same. The uh, the left leg is uh, is slightly different. So there's more tassels on here, and it's a slightly different pose as well. Um, so you get, um, I think there's what four or five different sort of variants across the uh, the ten models there that you can go with, uh, and then the chests. There's a few different um, chests, um, and then the position of the arms as well. The splinter rifle is the same. Uh, but it's the uh, the left arm is posed differently. So as you can see on this one, this one's sort of you running along, pointing, and then he's just got the splinter rifle up in the air. Uh, and as I said, it's just the same splinter rifle across all of them, apart from the XR. Um, so these none of these look the same. Uh, they're all posed slightly differently, and uh, I haven't had to put. A great deal of effort into uh, to achieve that. The thing that really drew me to uh, this squad, however, was that Exarch. Um, he does actually come with, I think it's three different weapon variants. I think it's three. So you can have him with the the two the dual wielding rifles. There's also basically all the codex options from the older version of the codex, if you remember that. So there was like a a more long-ranged splinter rifle um, that you could get, or you could just sort of have him kitted out with the one splinter uh, splinter rifle or, or whatever they're called. Um, so you get all of those options, and there is actually two different head options as well. So I went with this one because it's more like a spider, but I'll bring bring him up. Uh, and this this scenic base is part of the model as well. I haven't had to do that. That was just sort of part of the kit. This one was a little bit fiddly to put together because. All of these blades, so the blade, this part of the arm, and then the back part of the arm, they're all different parts, and then you have to sort of glue it in uh, behind, and then there's the cape as well that you have to sort of glue in. So it can be a little bit fiddly, um, but more than achievable. I've painted this guy fully fully built up like this. In fact, I painted all of these guys completely built. Um, generally, I'll try and sort of paint things a little bit modular to, to help me with the painting, but... Um, because of the poses and, and how, uh, if you can kind of see, you know, there are quite big gaps. So you can actually get get your paintbrush in and, and paint around quite easily. So I went uh, I went with that all built up. Um, but yeah, I think this Exarch's just really cool looking. You know, he's got that really sort of um, nice spider head with all the extra arms. He's got the two, the two guns. He looks like he's stalking somebody. Uh, and with these um, these sort of like blades, they're almost like uh, spider manable, man manables, man mantiples, whatever, whatever that word is. Uh, yeah, it looks like that. That's what it reminds me of. And then just having a cloak, having the cloak really makes somebody stand out on the battlefield. As you know, this is this is the leader of the squad. This guy looks cool. So. Uh, yeah, really, uh, really happy with um, how all of these come out. I've used the same sort of formula for the blades as I do across the force for all the bladed weapons, which is built up from, I think it's Wazdaka, Wazdaka Red, uh, and then sort of uh, washed over with the Carabo Crimson, and then all the way up to, uh, I think it's Empress Children Pink is the brightest pink. To, to sort of highlight this, so I'm just trying to sort of pick out all the details, brighter at the the pointier bits, just to make it stand out. And this is obviously my my rakar flesh, the sort of the bone colour there. So uh, that's that's the squad. Um, value wise, they're but pretty good value. I can't I can't remember exactly how much I paid for these, to be honest with you, because um, I bought them a 
good oh, probably a year ago now maybe even slightly longer than that I'm ashamed to say because I was really excited to get them and paint them and then when they arrived um, I put them straight in the cupboard and didn't paint them so yeah sorry about that ghost it's uh, <laughs> they're absolutely lovely models and I wish I had painted them sooner because they are really really cool they were nice uh, nice kits to paint as well so uh, yeah if you uh, if you want to pick some of these up I'll put the link down below so you can go and check out his other stuff he, he does he does other aspect warriors I think he's uh, he's got some sweeping hawks there's some harlequin stuff there so there's plenty of really cool stuff there uh, that you can go and have a have a look uh, look at there so definitely yeah, recommend him um, so yeah that's it thanks for watching guys um, leave me a comment down below if you like these uh, if you think it's something that you're going to pick up what's your thoughts about using third party miniatures uh, I know we won't be able to use them uh, in the uh, official games workshop uh, tournament scene because they're not official products but these definitely look better than the existing ones so uh, you'll be seeing these in uh, in battle reports in the future um, I'm really hyped for ninth edition coming out so um, I think one of the first armies that you'll see in ninth edition because I'll be learning a new edition so I may as well learn a new army at the same time because I haven't really played Eldar that much so uh, yeah you'll definitely be seeing these guys um, so again, thanks for thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you in the next one.